What is up, everybody? This is Vince Miller. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me for some time in God's Word. Today, I want to give a call out to Thomas Hines and his men's group who have been using our resource, our study guide, 30 Men Who Lived With Conviction. A couple of months back, we offered these for free to anybody who wanted to lead men. Thomas took up that challenge, found six other guys, and you can see a picture of him and his guys on our post today in that featured photo. Thomas, thank you so much for taking a leap, stepping in and leading men, and I'm glad that you're going to be continuing the journey as well. So the shout out is for you and your guys today. I hope it blesses you. It is from Galatians chapter 4 verses 27 through 29. A very interesting text for a group of guys. It reads, for it is written, and that is just a reference that Paul's going to make to a specific text in the Old Testament, Isaiah 51 verse 1. It states, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and cry aloud, you who are in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than those of the one who has a husband. Now you, brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. But just as at that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, so also it is now. Well, I think this text is interesting and it can be a bit confusing. Here's why. It combines several different genres and literary devices. Paul is using a historical narrative about Sarah and Hagar. He's combining that with an allegorical interpretation that he's making. He's following it now by a piece of prophetic text from Isaiah chapter 51 verse 1 and then writing it into a letter to the Galatians. <laughs> wow, that makes it really hard to interpret this text with precision because it's hard to understand Paul's intent with this particular text from Isaiah. Now, the simplest interpretation from my standpoint would be something like this. He's saying, rejoice. You are the people of the promise. The life you enjoy is a miracle. Cast out all other means and methods except faith alone. Now, that's my best interpretation here. <laughs> Thus, what we see here and what we witness is a profound reversal. It's a reversal. Believers move from barrenness to fruitfulness, from despair then to joy, from desolation to blessing, which is only accomplished by God's divine intervention into time and space. So this text and its application today reminded me that, well, we need to regularly celebrate God's work in our life. I mean, it's appropriate to sing praises to his name and to thank him for being faithful to us. Because I, like you, am prone to move too quickly past moments of, of immense and great spiritual joy, like the salvation of a friend or the birth of a child or the answer to a prayer or maybe a physical, emotional, or spiritual healing. We move too quickly past some of these divine events to get on with the next thing, don't we? But, but, when we take the time to celebrate, it communicates to God that we know what he did. Not that he needs our celebration, but that he wants us to know that we know what he did. And then it does something, it sears something onto our spirit and soul which actually benefits us down the road. That moment of celebration does something to our soul because sometimes in the future, we need a reminder of what God has done in the past. Sometimes that celebration becomes the emotional, mental, and spiritual anchor that reminds us of God's faithfulness when we need him the most in the future. So the next time God does something to you, for you, or with you, take the time to rejoice like a child of the promise. I love you guys. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, guys. I pray this has blessed you today. If it has, share it with someone else, and then I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.